Friday, July 5th, Major League Cricket makes its debut on Yes. Watch reigning champion MI New York begin their title defense against the Seattle Orcas. The first of seven electrifying MLC matches begins next Friday at 3.30, streaming live on the Yes app. And joining me to talk more about that, Jimmy O'Brien of John Boy Media. Jimmy, it's great to see you. And the reason we're having this conversation is because you are a huge fan of the sport of cricket. How did that come about? Yes, thanks for having me. I got into it rather recently, but I have watched cricket matches almost every day for the last couple of years because it's constantly on, and it's on at times that the Yankees aren't, so it doesn't get in the way. I started watching when my son was born, and I needed just background TV uh, that I, I, could, I could mute and yep. still follow along at 3 a.m. or 11 p.m., and that's when Australia or New Zealand or India are playing cricket. So I started watching and kind of falling in love with the differences and similarities to baseball. So let's talk about some of those, but I do want to ask you this. Recently, the USA team beat Pakistan, and that was a huge deal. How much do you think that at least recently, has jump-started people's interest in America and cricket? I think beating Pakistan, which was one of the bigger upsets the cricket world has seen at the international level, was uh, it was great to just to get the headlines going and some of the names out there and the curiosity, uh, have that start brewing. So people say, wait, we have a team? Wait, we're good? We're okay? So them reaching the Super 8s being the, uh, you know, uh, the final eight teams surviving in the T20 World Cup. That was great. And they hosted it, sold out stadiums. There's a huge community of people that live in the U.S. that grew up loving cricket, still love it, and are buying tickets to see these games and are excited about it. So I just think the entire campaign of hosting the World Cup and the U.S. then going on to win some matches was great to grow the curiosity, and hopefully that leads to some interest. All right, you're standing at a whiteboard, which means you're going to use that, obviously. Uh, you're pr the professor of cricket, and this is your education module. So if you just cut it down to the core, what's the biggest differences between baseball and cricket? The biggest difference, and this is, uh, this is a little speaking broadly, but the biggest difference is the whole game is swapped. In, in baseball, you have a rotation of batters trying to get the unlikely outcome from a pitcher who's in control. And cricket is the exact opposite. The bowlers rotate to try and get the unlikely outcome of an out. So outs are very rare in cricket and runs are very common. In baseball, it's the opposite. Now, you have to understand a little more of the nuances to understand that. But just the mindset is the hardest thing, I think, to adjust that outs are hard. A batter can hit for the entire game. If he never gets out, he gets the hit and score runs the entire time. All right, so you said you picked it up sometimes just muting the game, so you sort of watch the flow of the game. What would we notice if we're seeing sort of the structure of a cricket match? Yeah, so I'm going to go here. If you can see these black lines, this is a, a baseball diamond. Well, the first thing you're going to notice is that take these lines in the middle away. It's a giant circle. The distance between the pitcher and the batter, the bowler, is, is relatively the same. It's called the pitch in the middle. The batter can use all sides to hit, so 360. So you have to protect. So a little foul ball that goes backwards could go all the way to the boundary. And if a ball hits the boundary, like a ground rule double, or even just rolls to the wall, that's automatically four runs. Otherwise, it's running bases if you played that growing up. So if you hit a little single over here, you and your partner have to run back and forth, back and forth. Every time you do that, you get a run. The fielding team is trying to field the ball and throw it into the stumps, the three pieces of wood, before you get to your crease. So that's kind of the big difference is you're going to see the, the, the defense shift all the time because they have to protect so much more ground. There's no standard positions. And you're going to see the batters sometimes choose not to run, sometimes run really hard, and use the full 360 of the field to score runs. Now, is that why there are so many runs, as you said, and then there are so few outs? It's just tough to get those outs? Yeah, because batters do not have to run. So you can only get, you know, run out. You can only get caught stealing if you choose to steal. Think of it like that. So you can just block the ball, say, hey, that was a good pitch. 
Uh, that was a good ball. I'm, I wasn't going to score runs off of it. I wasn't going to hit it hard. So I just block it and we're going to stay put, do it again. Um, or you can constantly hit ground balls and there's no risk of getting caught on a, on the fly ball. So those are the two ways you can get out is a run out and a caught same as baseball. The third is if the bowler bowls it past you and hits those three sticks. So it's like one strike. If you let one strike go past you, you're out and you don't get to hit again for the entire game. So it's high stakes. So sometimes batters will just be more defensive and not run. How many different ways are there to score? And is there anything that's akin to either a home run or a grand slam that we know from baseball? Yes. So there's actually a lot more home runs. A lot of people that grow up in cricket nations, they'll call this version of the sport T20 baseball because they say the batters just hit home runs. But this has way more home runs than baseball. So what they call a home run is a six. So if it goes out of the stadium here, here, it doesn't matter which way. If it clears the boundary, it's automatically six runs, and you don't have to go through the motions of running. The other boundary is a four. So if it rolls to the boundary, it's four runs. Those are the two big ways to score. The other is to just put the ball in play and run back and forth with your partner running. And when you do that, now he'll be up and you'll be watching from the other end. And then if you run for a single again, now you're up and he's watching and you can keep trading in that fashion. Now, most of these matches, and this is pretty new, they even do this in the IPL. They're about three hours, right? We've always heard cricket is two, three-day affairs. They've really tightened these things up to make it more palatable to a lot of sports fans and viewers. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the old version of cricket, it's called test cricket. It's still around. It's still enjoyable, but it's more like the Masters. It's going to go on for four days. And you're going to tune in here and there, and there's ebbs and flows. And the reason being there's no limit on pitches or balls in that sport, so you have to get the batter out until you switch sides, and they can just block it and not run forever. In this version, there's a limit. There's only 120 deliveries available for the team to score runs off of and it was to shorten the game to put an emphasis on offense and it actually wasn't officially around until 2003 so it's relatively new and it did flip a lot of the skills and mindset on its head but it has grown like crazy uh, and it is very popular and fast and a shorter version of the old versions of cricket so take us through what we would see on the field in baseball we obviously see nine players including the pitcher the one batter up what are we going to see on a cricket uh um, field. So I, I want to do a, a cricket 11. You start 11 guys. There's no subs. You start 11 guys and that's your side for the match. So if I was to make a team out of the Yankees, you have to have your four pitchers or bowlers and they're going to have to hit and field when they're not bowling. So you need to be athletic. You want to be able to hit a little bit. I don't know how we're going to do that here, but otherwise it's very similar where I think, you know, you'd have Volpe and Soto open up because they can put the bat on the ball. They can have the restraint to make sure they don't get out early. And once one of them is out, I would bring Judge in. Your best hitter usually bats three, similar to baseball. And I thought this was cool because the lineup was, was very much the same. After Judge, I would go with uh, Verdugo because you want to keep the lefty-righty thing going. So we got Verdugo here. At five, I would go Glaber, and I, as I was making this, I said, hey, this is kind of wild. It's the same skill set where you want to righty, lefty, righty, lefty. You want to go more controlled bat and then power. And then at the end here, you're going to want to go like Rizzo and Stanton, and hopefully by the time they come in, they're allowed to just mash and without risk of losing their wicket or getting out and say, hey, if you see three balls hit – Hit two of them for six. That's 12 runs. That'd be great. But then you get in your bowlers, and they're going to have to play. And you're going to want a, two righties, two lefties. You're going to want one that's going to come in and both spin and the other pace. So I'd probably go with Rodon, you know, Cole, Nestor. And then I'd go with – oh, that's sloppy handwriting. That's good. That looks like a different <laughs> language. I would go with Holmes. So what you're going to see is – in the best version of this sport, T20, the bowlers never get up. All the batters do the damage because once you rely on them with the bat, you're probably in a really bad spot. The goal is that these guys can see half the game offensively and save the outs 
So when these guys come up, there's less risk. And um, when you're on defense, you're going to see a lot of different bowlers rotate. So instead of at bats, like I said, the batter rotates in cricket, the bowler rotates, uh, the batter rotates in baseball, the bowler rotates in cricket. So a bowler will come in, he'll throw six balls or six pitches, which might be, you know, that's a net bat, a lengthy at bat, and then rotate. And, and how it works is one will bowl from this side and six times, and then the next set of six will come from this side. And then the next set and the next set. So the boundary side change as well. If I'm batting right here as a righty and this is the short boundary, I'm excited. But then if I'm batting over here as a righty, this could be the deeper. So imagine sh the outfield wall shifting nonstop. So the strategy is a little endless there. And you're going to see um, them try to attack the batters early to get the early outs. And then if they don't get them out, they got to settle in and throw some spin and then you're going to save your bowlers for the very end too because they have they call it the death overs we would say closers they say death bowlers bowling at the death so the most crucial part of the game you're not bringing in rap soto though right talking about spin rates and everything like baseball does with their analytics not yet but i think <laughs> because mlc is coming here and they're starting to see what we're doing that's one thing that's going to introduce itself to the cricket world and then uh we'll see what happens because it'll probably get a little crazier on the bowling side. All right, you mentioned MLC, Major League Cricket. Uh, it started in the summer of 2023, I believe. They're playing their second season coming up. What What is the uh, the format? And there's what, six teams, is that correct? There's six teams. There's going to be 21 or 22 games, I believe, something like that. It's a couple weeks long. So they'll play their games in Dallas and in Carolina. They don't have stadiums for all the venues yet, but they're working on it. And it's a quick tournament. A lot of the domestic leagues, so each, a lot of the countries have their own leagues, Australia, New Zealand, India. They're all short. So they're a couple weeks long, and then the top four teams make the postseason, and then you crown a winner, which is really fun to follow, in my opinion, because it's not as long as baseball. You know, I love baseball, but I can't add another six-month sport <laughs> to my uh, attention span. So it's really quick. There's a game a night. So it's more a little like the NFL where you watch multiple teams, not just yours. So there'll be a game a night. There'll be, uh, I think, a round-robin format. And MI New York is the team that represents New York. They won last year. So you guys got some good company uh, joining Yes Network. Well, that's great news. And I, I do want to ask you about that. The players, are there key players? Are they some of them foreign-born or international players that grew up in the U.S., or are they on loan? What's the system to getting and stacking a roster the best possible way? So there are a lot of freelance cricketers, basically, that go to all these franchises. You can play for multiple different leagues. It's not like soccer where you just play in the Premier League or baseball where you play Major League Baseball. It, there's different seasons. So I guess it is akin to kind of the winter leagues in baseball where you can go have a team down there and you play for the Venezuelan League or uh, Mexico League and then Major League Baseball. But with Major League Cricket, the cool thing is uh, in your starting 11, you can have six international players and they are getting the best of the best at this version of the sport to come play in this league. It, it kind of silly because uh, a lot of Americans that I know that are tuning in, I'm like, I don't think you realize this guy is the best of the best at this sport and he's playing for your team. So, and then you have five U.S. local players that can make up the rest of your starting 11. Uh, that's, you can't have any more than six international players which is a lot which is why mlc has premier talent because it has the most slots for international players could you say that mi new york then as we get set to watch them on yes and the yes app has an aaron judge or a juan soto or something like that on their roster they have a lot of good players i think the star of their player in my opinion is rashid khan he's from afghanistan and just got his team afghanistan into the Final Four in the T20 World Cup. He's a spin bowler, so you're going to see him run in and this way and that way. And then he can bat at the end as a bowler and really do damage with the bat as well. I just love his intensity. But th they have Poran, who's on the West Indies, who's probably the one of the better captains of a, of a T20 side that you're going to have. He 
the captain makes all the decisions in cricket, all the, all the which bowler is going to come in next, which bowler is going to come in after him. All of those decisions are the captain, not the coaches. So it's a huge role. They have Kieran Pollard is one of the more winningest T20 players that is older and has played in all of these leagues. Those are your main stars. But they also have Trent Bolt is a New Zealand bowler, and he is maybe your Andy Pettit of the league. Uh, a little underrated, but always there and getting the job done. And then for the U.S. guys, they have Cheyenne uh, Johnny Gear, who is was my teammate in my warehouse games, and he's a character and hilarious. And also the U.S. captain, Monan Patel, is on MI New York. But I would say Rashid Khan is the one name. When I found out he was on MI New York last year, I said, well, they're going to win. And then they won. <laughs> and they'll try and defend that championship this year. Jimmy, before we let you go, anything we're leaving off the table or off the whiteboard that people that are just getting to know cricket should know about? I would just say be ready to learn a little bit and be open-minded. A lot of people go into new things, uh, just dismiss it out of hand. So if you turn it on and you watch what happens and then look at the score bug and see which numbers change, you'll learn it really fast. Awesome. Jimmy, great stuff. Good to see you, as always. Again, you can catch the season opener for MI New York on July 5th as the defending Major League Cricket champions take on the Seattle Orcas. The action begins at 3.30 p.m. on the Yes app.